Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates, news and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a couple of news that you would definitely find interesting. First off, Blender 2.83.7 has been finally released now this is one of those lts releases that is now here and in case you're using either windows store steam and also snap this is available for you to go ahead and download so if you're working with the grease pencil within your mac os and you get to you know notice things like broken gradient right now this one has been fixed so you can go ahead and play with it and then if you're working with linux Obviously, there are certain things that has been fixed for that, so you can also go ahead and download this one within the snap. Now, speaking about things that you can also take a look at, this week, we did have three different meetings. Now, these meetings include the Tuesday talk, we also got the rendering meeting, and then there was a pose library and browser meeting. Now, within the Tuesday talk, we've already talked about the whole idea about this one. So within the Tuesday talk, they did discuss about things like modeling, you know, all of those very tiny individual modules that makes up Blender. And within this time, we're seeing some very nice status reports that has to do with bug fixing. There's also some pretty cool updates and follow ups that are now here. So in case you want to read more about this one, link is going to be in the description so you can check these things out. Moving on to Blender rendering meeting. So last week we talked about the folks at Blender and also NVIDIA coming together. And it's very interesting to see that this week we are seeing both the guys from Tangent, NVIDIA and also Blender coming to discuss about the cycles and you know the HD cycle delegates and also USD. So if you're concerned about this one, you want to read more, you want to catch up with the update that has to do with both the motion blur thing they're talking about, volumetric rendering, the issues that they're going to be having and issues that has to do with both particles and hair, then you should definitely take a look at this one. The third meeting that was also held within this week is the Pose Library and Asset Browser. Now this one, they're talking about ways that they can improve both the Pose Library and also the Asset Browser. And they are looking at various modalities and also taking into account the current system of things. And you can also take a look at this and see what they're talking about the current system, how to create, use, share, and also a couple of novelties they would like to incorporate into this. So with all of this said, let's dive over and take a look at some of the updates that are now available with Blender 2.91. So last week we talked about some things. Yesterday we did cover a video about the whole, you know, VDV new feature, but there are certain things you may want to see. So first things first, we're going to talk about the UI. Now, once you select an object, we already talked about this one that once you press tab, you get to notice that there's an icon right here. But if you simply switch from this and move over to your sculpt room, you also notice there is an icon right here. Now, while we're talking about things that you can definitely do with Blender, they've also gone ahead, the Blender development team, they've also gone ahead to tease that there is a new quick search that will be coming very soon. So this one is going to be pretty nice as we already know that by default, you can now easily search within the property section, but they are looking at ways that you can search within the modifier instead of clicking on the drop down and trying to scan through to find what modifier you want. You can now easily search for those modifiers and apply them automatically. I also wish that the apply button is something that they could fix because I think it is, you know, sort of counterintuitive to have the apply button right here. Initially it was great, but over time I'm beginning to feel like maybe something like so should be fixed. And if it's just going to be a button above or somewhere around, I think that might be pretty good. Next up is a very nice feature that we talked about a few hours ago, and that is the new VDB modifier. So there was a couple of comments and I think I can address some of them. We did talk about the fact that right now, once you select an object, simply hit shift and A, go over to volume, create an empty and within the modifier right now with this volume selected, you can now add a modifier called mesh to volume. Now, once you use the eyedropper, you can now select the object and automatically you can create a volume out of this. Now, some persons did ask some questions, which I think is best for us to address. So we're going to get Suzanne the monkey right here and simply try out some things. Let's go ahead and subdivide her a bit. So just simply select that, throw a bit of a subdivision to make her smooth, right click, make a smooth shade. And one of the questions is, will this support wind? Well, what I know is it definitely supports any mesh. So what we're going to try out is 
you know trying to see if we can explode this of course i did try this earlier and it worked so i'm just going to do this for anyone who is interested and for anyone who is asking so they can also see that this actually works select the object go over to object and then we're going to get a very quick effect now the quick effect we would like to throw in here is the explode so automatically you will notice it has a couple of things going on right there and once we press the playback button you notice this explodes so if we hit ctrl z with this object selected and then hit shift and a go right over to volume make an empty volume select this make a mesh select and select susan and let's simply select the object go right here where we have our visibility turn off the mesh and you'll notice that we have susan right here so once we press the playback button of course you can see that we have that vdb thing happening let's take a look at what it looks like within cycles and ev so i'm just going to go ahead and move this right about the point like so let's switch this to cycles real quick so let's get this one happening and yes you can see that automatically you have this going for you we already talked about this as it supports animations as well so if you have an animated object you can easily get that feature happening you can convert that animated object to vdb and then if you have an object like this that you have simulation running on and you know it's a mesh obviously you can now easily more than ever just play with this and get some cool stuff happening for you so you can increase the density if you want to increase you know you want to get some pretty cool density happening if you also want to increase the voxel amount let's kick this all the way to 128 and yep you can get some pretty fine looking stuff we did explain some of these things so you can take a look in the description and see that video for yourself so with this said let's talk about pablo our very good friend pablo is working non-stop to make our lives better and what more is he doing than talking about the fact that he wants to revamp the whole sculpt room and get a much more faster looking you know room for everyone to start sculpting in so he went over to his twitter and he made this particular video where he's showcasing a couple of updates that he's doing privately and hopefully this is going to be implemented within blender overall and you can see side by side what it looks like with the current version of blender and also what it looks like with you know the update that he's trying to work on next up is the update that he has implemented within the sculpt room now we have susan the monkey right here subdivided and if you simply go over you would notice that we have a brand new set of two different icons the first one is the line gesture icon that you can now use for making masks so you can now make masks by simply drawing a line and then you can make masks like so like so and depending on what you want to do you can literally use this one and create some pretty cool stuff of course we've seen a couple of other things that has to do with you know trimming we saw the lasso trim we saw the box trim about two weeks ago and it's very interesting to see that we're having this one but these are not the only things that you can get here so if we just simply clear the mask right now we also have a very nice button here which is the line project so pablo seems to have tagged all of these line tools as line gesture tools so the line project is more like the clip brush that you have in zbrush so what this does is if you simply select an object you can draw a line and collapse the other part of your object towards one section so if i drag this line across you can notice that it simply collapses all of these other side to this part so if we fire up zbrush to take a look at this comparison what this does is if, let's go ahead and turn off symmetry right there if you hold out Control and shift you notice we have the clip brush right here so with this clip brush if i simply hold on Control and shift and drag you can notice it also does the same thing so it collapses that part so let's do that as a symmetrical stuff let's go all the way out and do something like so and you can see it collapses it i would also wish for pablo to implement a feature where you can tell what direction this is happening as in zbrush once you drag you can tell that where the gradient is which is a point like so this part you can tell that this is where the action is going to take place so we can do that and you can tell that that is where the action is taking place contrary to what we have here in blender where you cannot really tell if it's happening within this side or this side you only need to second guess them by either dragging upwards or downwards so i really wish that this is something that he can also add up to the implementation speaking about things that has been or will be added to the implementation there is a very tiny update that a couple of people may notice so the other time where we talked about 
sculpting by simply using multiple tools we talked about the fact that you can now dive into the sculpt room and once you tap d on your keyboard so let's try that so if you go over to the sculpt room and you know you're sculpting on one particular object like so we talked about it that once you tap d on your keyboard you can now select an object but that doesn't seem to work this week the reason is because if you go over to your edit section go over to your preference let's drag this over to this part and go over to experimental they have now turned this into an experimental feature that you can now turn on or turn off so if you turn this on and simply go back you can now tap d on your keyboard and have these things going the whole idea of this is so you can also have your symmetry tied up to different parts of your model the way you have left them to be. So if you're working with 2.9 and you get to experience this, it's not a problem from you. You just need to go over to edit, go over to preference, and then you need to turn this on. So with all of this said, there are certain things which are still being implemented and hopefully once they come to light, we're going to talk about all of them. Now let's simply go ahead and talk about some more experiments that is going on within the blender community now within the blender community there is a very nice experiment that is happening and bruno postel is actually doing a great job so he's creating this amazing add-on known as topologize and it's you know it's a crazy add-on i just seem to have stumbled across it about a few hours ago before this whole thing and it is just amazing so i did write to him talked to him about it he gave me some breakdowns about this and it seems to be one of the most fascinating tools i have seen for architectural you know stuff and also for easily creating things like buildings and stuff really easy directly in blender so it is it's just mind-blowing the whole idea that you just need to create one particular object it kind of reminds me of town scraper a tool that we've already you know talked about before on the channel so i'm also going to link that in the description so you can see it but the whole thing about this tool is it is presently not ready for use so it turns out that it's ready for use some way somehow for anyone working with linux but at this point it's not available and once we get a hold of it we are going to take a look at it and you know i'm going to share the whole idea and where you can possibly get a proper download for that you can also follow the development that is happening directly here on his twitter page i'm also going to link that in the description so you can see how you can get good with this amazing stuff now speaking about things that are amazing we also have a pretty cool add-on that is from a wonderful creator known as Mako. So Mako is making this crazy add-on known as the Terrain Mixer. And the whole idea from this is gotten from the guys at Gear. So this is something that he has been working on. And you can notice that this renders were posted a few days ago. And yes, if you want to get this, you can simply go over to the Gum Road. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can get it, read more about it. And if you're a fan of Blender Market, you can also go over and you can also notice that he just dropped this one day ago and this is just interesting for anyone who is into terrain building you know you're into creating some beautiful landscape either for your game art for matte painting or concept design speaking about things you can check out elite michael is also working on something crazy ridiculous beautiful i don't know how i'm going to frame this but this is actually something that most people would want if you're tired of thinking about how to position you know your gizmo or you're looking for pivot points this particular tool that he has created would easily help you create and you know customize your gizmo so if you're looking for ways to get custom gizmos you're looking for some pretty cool gizmos you can add to your rig or maybe you're just trying to find a better way of interacting with your rigs or maybe interact with your 3d model you can also come over to the link in the description go over to the blender market or also go over to either his github to take a look at some of the things he has been working on and at the same time you can also go over to his twitter to take a look at some of the updates that is happening with this tool and this one as well was just posted a day ago and it's just very impressive the kind of things that blender creators are coming up with and while we're talking about things that blender creators are coming up with i stumbled across this which is a play blast tool for blender so this tool is made available by angelo 
look at and this one is for free if you have an ad station account you can simply come over to ad station and download this totally for free so in case you are thinking about creating playbacks if you're coming from maya coming from 3d studio max you would know how important this is for creating previews for animation and if this is a thing for you you can also come through and take a look at this so this is all about it i would like to know what you guys think about all of these beautiful things that we've talked about in the comment section if you want to read more about all of these updates you can simply go over to the link in the description if you want to take a look at all of these add-ons maybe you want to read more about these things links to all of these are also going to be in the description so you can do well to check them out tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.